Hi everyone, uh, Mike Lewis here with Tracy Johnson. I'm really excited to be talking to her because yesterday we had a panel on millennials and Tracy's actually a millennial who's actually involved very heavily in the marketing space. So I want to get your opinion on some of the stuff going on, but before I jump into everything, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your company. Thanks. So yeah, I'm Tracy Johnson. I work for ENC Marketing. We are um, a government marketing agency right outside of DC and focus on agencies that are trying to reach constituents as well as IT companies and other you know corporate companies trying to reach into the government, which is of course going to be you know a growing market in the next few years. Definitely. And uh, so we heard you know a great panel yesterday on millennials, and I just felt like I had to to stand up and represent as a millennial. <laughs> and and they touched on some really great points, but I think that we just really touch on the surface. And I have you know some varying theories about millennials versus why, and um, cool. you know some nuances there that I think were um, touched on but really could have gone a little bit deeper. Cool. So what, what would you say is different? I mean in your opinion you're a millennial, so you're 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 the you're the case study, right? Yeah. So for someone who's trying to market to the millennial generation, what's really different about you guys? Well the first thing that I think everyone associates with millennials and Gen Y and whatever you want to call it is that there's this you know, you've been handed everything that, you know, you, you know, we get this bad rep for like just expecting things and, and I think that there certainly is an aspect of that, but that's just, that's one detail. I mean, I think every generation has a me aspect to it. If you're a marketer and you're not talking to that person in the right tone and the right things that they're wanting, yeah. then, then you're not going to get through. But I think the real differences, especially with millennials, is that uh, they want to be part of something. We want to be part of something. There's, um, a sense, you know, we're joiners, we're on Facebook, we're on all the social media possible, mm -hmm. and uh, we want to know that our efforts are contributing to something bigger than ourselves. Very cool, very cool. So, you mentioned being connected, and I'm going to ask the same question I asked the panel yesterday. Okay. So, one of, the, one of the things I got from Twitter, I asked people to submit questions, mm -hmm. and one of the questions I got was, one of the big stereotypes of the millennial generation is that they're very connected and know what's going on within their within their relationships that they have, mm -hmm. but aren't really in touch with everything going on in the world. And I know where you are, of course, you're you know, you're in the government, you know everything that's going on, but as kind of a broader view, do you agree with that statement? I, I don't. I actually think the complete opposite. I mean I'm personally a political junkie. I mean I'm on <laughs> Slate, I'm on all of those, you know, uh, political thing I saw ran into Wolf Blitzer at the airport and was like freaked out, like uh, I cool. saw Justin Timberlake. You know, I mean, it's it's like Wolf that in Blitzer, DC. Justin Timberlake. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I text my friends. I've never and heard they, that comparison before, but only they the They were new like, "Is he summer. like a new hottie or something?" I was like, um, <laughs> "Situation room." No, yeah, come on. So, um, but I think I, I don't agree with that. I think that there misconception misconception is there because there's a different consumption style. Um, People think because we're on these social networks that we're not as productive, I'd argue that we're more productive. We're actually just consuming, you know, such a larger percentage of information than, you know, people used to. If you used to read the newspaper and it would take you a certain amount of time, but now I can get, you know, the top headline sound bites in a much faster way than people used to. So, you know, I, I think that a lot of these millennials are out there reading the news. They're they're on CNN, they're on, you know, Fox, they're mm -hmm. on some other news networks, yeah, and yeah. you know they really are interested and up to speed, and they want to be a part of the conversations. They want the knowledge to be a part of the conversation. So, but but I mean, it's a global impact, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's mm -hmm. really what you're looking to accomplish. Yeah. Whereas, you know, my generation, you said it best. You know, we're we're out trying to start companies, and we're going to become individual millionaires, and that's our that was our mission, that mm -hmm. was our driver in life. Uh, whereas this is much more, you know, what can we do as a collective to get out there mm -hmm. and do it, mm -hmm. which I think is great. Yeah. I think that's really interesting. So one of the one of the one of the ladies yesterday mentioned um, actually was talking a little bit about that you're very self-centered as a group, and one of the things I thought when she said it, and I I, I only had five minutes at the end, so I didn't get to push her on it. But one of the things I thought at the end is, did you just read that out of a book yeah. or a magazine, or was it? Are, were you seriously saying that your generation is really kind of self-centered? I don't know. I mean, I got the <laughs> same impression. I just I felt like um, they weren't even thinking about themselves when they were up there. I felt like they were um, very well spoken, you know, great, yeah. oh, great, yeah, great, great group of people. Great. But uh, a lot of it, they were as if they just read a report on themselves, right. as right. opposed to really looking in and saying, you know, this is how I see the world. And, you know, I, but I totally agree with the, you know, we all believe that we will be famous. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's a perception. It's not, I'm going to start my company. It's going to be, I'm going right. to. It's not, it's not about independence and, and, um, and 
you know, making a name for yourself, it's these many people know me. You know, <laughs> this, I'm, you know, a star on a television show, or I'm on a reality show, or, you know, I'm going to be seen here, or I have this many friends on Facebook, or this many people are following me. It's really about, you know, this status. is my, yeah, status. Exactly. That's really cool. That's, uh, I don't know if it's cool or not cool, but yeah. if you're marketing to a millennial, and there are going to be tons of people watching this at home that are going to say, you know, that really want tips on how to target this market, what they need to do differently, if they need to do anything differently. What would you recommend? I mean, I would use a similar approach that you do with any of your customers. I mean, first of all, figure out whether the millennials are your customer. I mean, they touched on, mm -hmm. I thought the biggest value out of that panel yesterday was the, um, the statistic on, you know, the buying capacity of the millennials and how mm -hmm. that's really going to be, you know, we're, they're gonna, we're gonna outnumber baby boomers in five years, I think they said. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that was the big value piece that I took out of it, but, um, you know, looking, is it, does your product or service even apply to them? Mm -hmm. um, but in building that strategy, I would say, you know, just ask them, give them a platform to tell you their opinion. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they want to be heard, they want to, um, be asked and know that you care. So really, it's it's about so if you do figure out that the millennials are the right target for my product or service, it's about taking the time to listen to them, let them contribute, and let them be part of you know make them feel like they're part of something bigger. So they're mm -hmm. actually contributing to mm -hmm. the growth of your product and actually almost doing marketing for you. Absolutely. Oh, we will. We'll market for you. We, I can't tell you. I mean, I, my friends are probably tired of of hearing me talk, they just say, stop talking. Like, because I will go off. If, if someone has done a good job marketing or has actually provided me value, I will tell every single person I know and I will to, you know, maybe I bought it, maybe I didn't, but I will, you know, go on rants for days wow. about certain products or services that I thought were marketed effectively. So what, so what are the, uh, what are good brands or products that have done that? Hmm. The zinger question. <laughs> Um, let me think. I'm gonna think. I'm gonna. I'm gonna send you my favorites. <laughs> all right. All um, right. But nothing comes to mind off the top of your head of just brands that have been really good in your eyes about mm -hmm. marketing to. Well, you specifically. I mean, you're a millennial, so you know. Is there any brand that you're loyal to? That's like. The, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> Um, that in itself you know, is I, interesting. I, mean, I, I actually, um, I'm loyal to um, Nordstrom as oh, a okay. brand. Yeah. I, I, okay. I just I worked for them for many years, and okay. I just I really, I mean, but it get back it gets back to the whole thing that they provide real value and service, and they care, and um, yeah. you know sometimes they don't always carry all the brands that I want, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will go there first yeah. and and make sure that they don't carry it before I buy it from somewhere else. That's great. You know, I've heard Nordstrom's name come up every time I've asked that question because of the experience that they give you when yeah. you're at the store, number one, and then just how they make you feel part of a community mm -hmm. overall. Mm -hmm. Apple gets the same kind of thing. And right. Believe it or not, well, Starbucks and actually Panera, I'm hearing more and more that people love Panera. Well, sure, a free Wi-Fi. Yeah, well, yeah, anything free I mean, is good, right? <laughs> absolutely. I mean, the people will go to Panera to study uh, over... Or Tons work. of places, yeah. or work, yeah. you know. Uh, but <laughs> speaking of people that may yeah. still be in college, yeah, 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 it's you. We, you know, we want you to give us something. Yeah, definitely. No, that's really cool. Well, I really appreciate your time. I don't want to take up any more of your time back from learning. Oh no, at thank the new you very much. Summit. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks for taking some time with us. Bye. Thanks.